Hey, hey, it is a fine day in Champaign, Illinois, back from my East Coast road trip. And I just wanted to kind of recap. I had a great time. First of all, met some really good dudes. The only thing that sucked about my trip was the drive. It was, I mean, it was a solid 12 hours. Day one, I left at uh, four in the morning, technically like 4.11, I think I pulled out of the driveway at 4.11 a.m., Headed towards, I was going to meet Coach Breen, uh, Grady Breen, at um, South Carroll High School in Maryland. And Coach Breen, he was out at, where was South Carroll? South Carroll was in a, technically in a little town called Sykesville. Um, and it was about a solid 12 hour drive. And my little daughter is trying to get my attention. Yes, sweetie? Okay, we will scare her right after this video, okay? Okay. That little girl is super persistent. Um, as I was saying, Sykesville, Maryland. And as I'm driving, first of all, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, 12 hours is just a long way to go. So I'm kind of numb at this one point. And I get into the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, and the Appalachians just go forever. I, I just had this thought. How did people, I, no wonder the Appalachians kept, kept, <laughs> the American um, civilization east of the for 200, 250 years, because they're, you know, they're just really, really broad stretching. I'm looking at it going, how would you get through these if you couldn't go 70 miles an hour in a car? Anyway, you no sooner come out of the mountains, you get into Maryland and all I'm thinking, all I know of Maryland is Baltimore. I don't know Baltimore. I just know it's there. And it, it's just kind of open country. And then there's the schools. So, Met with Coach Breen. Coach Breen did a great job. That was night number one. And he talked. First of all, he shared their run game from the um, his last school that he was at. And now, then after that, he shared his quarterback play. And Coach Breen, I mean, so he's a young cat, super young cat, 25 years old. Of course, looks younger than that, just a pup. Um, he's been, this is, just finished his second year teaching and coaching. And I was honestly pretty blown away with how well studied and well read and uh, this young man was you know he spoke super well and i think that i think just being a teacher helps with that because you're in front of people all the time you're in front there's no harsher crowd than a group of teenagers so that's going to help you become a better, a good speaker quickly uh so he just did a, a really good job i think i was impressed with how uh, just his his knowledge base at such a young age that again how well read he was how many things he could reference uh, this style of play, this coaching style, this coaching point that came from this coach, really pretty blown away. So he did a really good job with his run game, a lot of good, interesting, kind of high-level thought in there, and then just really knocked it out of the park with his quarterback play. Now, I think Coach Breen is going to be a guy that you're going to hear a lot from. You know, he's very active social media-wise. He's got a, a long, bright career ahead of him. So any of you guys that are looking to hire an OC you know, on the East Coast and you want a young, bright up-and-comer, you better find Coach Breen before he's taken. Uh, so he did a great job. And then uh, hit the local joint after after that with Coach Breen and a buddy of his. And we just had a great time talking ball at the local spot there in Sykesville, right outside their school. And I tried Old Bay Wings for the first time. Anybody had Old Bay? It's like an East Coast spice. And uh, I had never had it. Delicious. But, you know, a lot to be said about just the quality of the wings outside of the Old Bay. All right, so then following morning, I had to see Coach Smith. So Jeremiah Smith, he goes by Jerry, Jerry Smith, out of Brunswick High School, which was only about 30 miles away. Now, the one thing I would point out about Maryland that I think was just, it's, just, it's different to me, was it's like you're in West Virginia, then you're in Maryland, then you're in West Virginia, then you're in Pennsylvania. Like all these states in Virginia at some point you're you're within four states and you're 20 miles away from any of them and that obviously being an illinois guy where everything's just wide open and you drive for hours and hours and hours you're in the same state uh that was different for me so that was just kind of interesting to see but anyway brunswick right up against the border there the southern border i'm going to say right across the river would be west virginia or was it virginia now i gotta look up a map maybe i'll post something over here and see what it officially was but uh Coach is doing a great job there. So he's a guy, he, I think he's about 38 years old. He's had a pretty good coaching career up to this point, has bounced around a little bit as, as, he, as he moved up the ladder, had successful coaching jobs. 
and was kind of ready, as he says, he was ready to take a break. And then this job comes up at Brunswick High School, which was his alma mater, and they hadn't won a game in two years. And you know how it is as a coach, man, when you're looking at, first of all, it's where you're from and they've been struggling and you know that you know what you're doing, you know you could help turn them around. That's hard to resist. And, and coach took it and said, he went for it. I believe this was his third year there. Uh, I think they went seven and three this year and missed the playoffs, which still blows my mind, right? The, the, there are playoff systems out there in some states where you can have an incredible season and not make the playoffs. You know, I guess playoffs would be a, a different conversation altogether. But anyway, they're playing great football. He's turned it around. And really, honestly, again, kind of taken back by just how well studied this young this guy was as well. Uh, he, he, and they're referencing a lot of the same things, him and even Coach Kelly out of Morgantown, which was my next stop, you know, referencing Cody Alexander and referencing just these some of the same stuff they're they're referencing the same things books they've read and where they're learning and you know if anybody knows me very well they know that i love hearing that i love hearing you reference where you learned something i think i think that's huge it shows that you are studying and the fact that you remember it, it, you're giving that guy credit for what you know because uh, you know let's face it what we know really is a product of what someone else has told us or wrote down so that we could read it that's really how we learn so it's cool for me to see I like hearing those things and coach Smith did three presentations he really just kind of summarized everything that he did now you might think summarize short no I mean he went for over an hour three times on his offense defense and special teams and he could have gone for three more hours on each one I mean we would take a quick break and he'd go how long has it been right and I'd say well oh, 45 minutes he'd go what I just started uh, so, you, you know, he just loves to talk ball and did such a great job. And again, just referencing, uh, I read this book and again, referencing coach uh, at the coach. A. Uh, so look up coach Smith. That's at coach Smith fifth. No, at coach J Smith 55. Uh, let me see. I wrote that down over. Yep. At coach J Smith 55. He's at Brunswick. Um, he presented it as, Hey, here's my offense at a small school defense at a small school, special teams at a small school. Again, he went very deep into all of his systems. However, uh, here's something that I wasn't ready for. You know, in Illinois, small school, if you say I coach at a small school, pretty much saying, of course, ever this could differ per person, but you're pretty much saying I, I coach at a school about 300 or less. Um, but Brunswick actually has 750 kids. So in Illinois, if you have 750 kids, well, that would put you 4A. There are eight classes. You're the you're about in the middle. You're practically in the middle. You, you really wouldn't be considered a small school. So it's just so interesting how perspective changes. You know, you cross a state line and your perspective changes and, and size is relative, right? So uh, I remember when I co got my first head coaching job, it was at Milford High School, a high school of 200 kids. And they want to know where I was from. I was from a, a school that was about an hour and a half away called Monticello and about 500 kids in the school. And I remember them going, oh, a big school. And I had just come from the Chicago suburbs where the schools were 1,600, 2,000. And I just laughed and I thought, <laughs> again, it's just a matter of perspective, right? When I was at Monticello, that's just all I knew. Schools up in the suburbs sounded huge to me. And then I go in the suburbs and I spend time there and now Monticello feels small. And I go to Milford and they tell me how Monticello is big. So uh, I just thought it was interesting. A school of 750 kids, in Illinois, that's going to put you in 4A, and you're not really considered a small school, right? It's kind of like that that middle of the road. You got a good sized school with a lot of opportunities. So, but I, I think he said at one point they're the 15th smallest school in Maryland, or maybe the 15th smallest school that plays football. Obviously, there could be a difference there. So I had a great time with Coach Smith. Um, the The problem was I didn't get to start with Coach Smith till midday almost. And he had, because he had some passing league in the morning. And then I, as soon as I no sooner got out and I had to head to Morgantown. So Morgantown was about a three hour drive back west though. Thank goodness. Back towards home on my way. And you start getting into the thick mountains and then here's Morgantown. So I'd never been to Morgantown. I was meeting the defensive coordinator there, Matt Kelly, uh, who's been there. I think he said for nine years, been head, the D coordinator for three or four. I can't remember now. And um, I knew a little bit about Morgantown because I have family uh, 
in 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 theory, it's like a step niece. I have a step niece, step nieces that go to Morgantown or went to Morgantown. So I had seen pictures. And when I saw the picture of the stadium online on Coach Kelly, and look up Coach Kelly's at Mr. Kelly says, I'll put that up here, at Mr. Kelly says, find him on Twitter. When I looked up their Twitter, you saw a picture of their stadium, and right away I thought, this I have to see this place. Uh, so pull into Morgantown, and you no sooner get there again, as I said, you're in the thick of the of the mountains, and Morgantown is like skinny road. You're going straight up, straight down. These old, old houses from like 1920, 1930 that really look like they haven't been worked on since then. Uh, People sitting on the porch. I mean, it looks back country. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of areas of Morgantown with newer subdivisions, but the bulk of the center of that town is just old town in the mountains. And I'm looking at it going, man, how do you, just such a different way of life. Because even to park your car, like getting, I can't imagine school buses trying to get around the streets of Morgantown. So any of you from Morgantown or been to Morgantown, any good stories about uh, Morgantown in general or the chaos that living in the mountains is, leave a comment below. Would love to hear from it. But uh, you pull up to Morgantown High School and from the front, just you just see some old brick buildings, just these basic facades. But as soon as you turn the corner, you start to see, because then it, when you turn, it goes downhill, right? Again, you're in the mountains, so everything's built into a mountain. So when you first pull up to it, you're, you know, the building's right here. Well, it just looks like this short, regular one-story little building. Just, that's all it looks like. It was one-story brick building, pretty old. And you turn right, and when you turn, now you're going down the mountain. And, of course, the top of the building just stays level. And as you go down, it just opens up to a second story, a third story. Four, I mean, you just goes down and the brick buildings open up. I'm going to put a picture right here. I went on and on and on about it on my Twitter feed. I made a quick live video. It is the best setting I've ever seen for a high school football game. It's just gorgeous. Now, yes, there are stadiums out there that cost more. There, you know, Allen, Texas, yes, it's gorgeous. But this stadium, I cannot picture a better atmosphere for a high school football game. I mean, you're in the mountains, carved into a mountain with the buildings just surrounding you. You know, no track around the football field, just gorgeous. And for a guy like me, who high school football is kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's not everything, right? Faith, family, I, those are the things that are most important to me. But when you get outside of the things that really matter in life, the next thing for me is high school football. And I, I love it. I love it. And to see this at the most incredible atmosphere, I couldn't help but just completely geek out. And then right at the foot of the stadium is another brick building, and that's their locker room, gorgeous locker room. I'll throw up a picture here that I had taken from it. Uh, and then <clears throat> off to the side, the next door, they had just built another brick brick building again nothing's gonna be like pole varnish brick building like stone brick i mean just very classic looking uh brand new weight room which was gorgeous and air conditioned i was blown away so i was just giddy the whole time i was a little tired i was getting pretty tired at this point after all the driving but and it was about 6 p.m 7 p.m we didn't start until but coach kelly was doing two presentations one on his four three and the second on their press quarters and I, it's just really good. Just, just I, again, I, and I told Coach Kelly this. When I first started this in about 15, 16, I was so confident in who I was and what I was doing. I mean, so confident, too confident. And um, was pretty sure, you know, I was a big, I, I really thought, and maybe not outwardly, but when I think back, I, I know what my brain, my mindset was. I really felt like I was really special. I was really good at this. I was in the upper echelon. And as I've traveled, it just continue to get more and more humbled because there are so many guys out there that do what I do, but maybe better, right? I, I, that's hard to, that's a hard pill to swallow at times. And Coach Kelly, again, this f- finished up a three guy set that are doing what I do as well or better. And Coach Kelly, again, super well read, referenced at the Coach A again, talked about Shat Boyd, some names that I knew. And guys, he's been studying and learning from. He's a huge Mark D'Antoni um, disciple. It just, 
you know, at Michigan State, is just doing such a good job. And I was pretty blown away by his presentations. I, I, I just love what he said as he continued to talk about his press coverage, like his press quarters. He's like, we're not, it's not press man, but it, we're, we're going to press it. We want to take away what is easiest for you to throw and force you to throw some things that are harder, like fade, right? We know fade's coming because we're pressing you up in our press quarters, but we know it's coming. We can rep it, and it's still a lower percentage throw for you than a hitch is. Okay, that's all there is to it. It's a lower percentage throw than a hitch. And I, I just love I love hearing a guy that really believes in what he does and has studied what he does and knows why he loves what he loves and why he loves it. And Coach Kelly 100% knew that, felt good about what he was doing, and he sold me. You, you know a guy believes in what he does when he sells you on what he's doing, right? I'm not a 4-3 guy, but I was sold on the 4-3 when I left. So by the time I left Morgantown on whatever night that was and was trying to get a couple hours of, of road time in before I stopped to grab a hotel room, uh, once again, just I was humbled and, and just left shaking my head going, I need to be better. I need to be better at this. I take it seriously. I want to be good. And again, just guy after guy after guy after guy are doing this job better than I'm doing it or um, maybe believe in what they're doing more so than I believe in what I'm doing. So I've got to be, I need to be better. That's all there is to it. That's what it made me feel like. I felt like I need to be better. And uh, so huge kudos to those three guys on kind of opening that, opening that up for forcing me to think about that, uh, to, to forcing, forcing me to, to realize that, that I need to, Maybe maybe I maybe I shouldn't be as hard on myself and say I got to be better. Maybe it's you better continue to study and learn if you want to keep up with the modern day coach because it, around the entire nation guys are studying this game and are playing this game at a high level. All right, thanks for catching up with me. If any of you are still left to watch this, uh, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. It was a great road trip. I really all I have left to shoot for the summer is my three videos. And then I'm going to visit a guy named Sam Hernandez uh, in Wisconsin. And that's my last stop. 2020 clinic, has, 2019 clinic has been awesome. And all this stuff will be up for a year. So I hope you get a chance to check it out. We'll see you soon.